So welcome to this video series on building a chat GTP app with inside Flutterfo. If you love learning by doing, then this is the video series for you. So in this particular series, we are going to get you familiar with using Flutterflow. Of course, if you are a beginner and you're not quite there yet in terms of your full understanding, then certainly watch along this series here because certainly some of the concepts that I'll be presenting will may be new to you and you'll be able to then take that knowledge into your own development. And of course, if you're exploring the use of using chat GPT with inside your application then again this video series is really really useful for you because I'll show you how I set this application up and of course you can just lift that into your own applications as well and of course if you're looking to see if Flutterflow is the platform for you to, to build your next NoCo project then definitely uh, stick around because um, hopefully it will give you a good demonstration of the system and of course if you're just interested in watching just for pure entertainment reasons then fantastic but the main thing is if you are are looking to learn by doing and following along you'll you should end up with the same application at the end of the series so um, what are we building then so we're building this AI chatterbox application that's what I've called it it's just primarily a personal chat GPT client so you should be familiar with chat GPT of course if you've been using it we're going to do something very similar here but I'm going to show you how, obviously how to build it with inside Flutterflow um, the key thing though of course is that it's a single page application so there's nothing complex about it it's not like we've got hundreds of screens to build it's just one screen um, but I'm going to show you how to hook up all of the moving parts for it to then produce something like you're seeing on the screen right now and now the application does use some logic okay so it's not just all about UI or no code there is a little bit of low coding in there as well but I've made it really really easy for you I've documented it you are going to walk you through what the code is actually doing to then support your learning in that particular space and of course we've got some animations in here as well and I'll show you how to include those with inside the application I've already loaded the base project with those so you've already got those with inside the project but um, I'm going to show you how to hook those up within the UI also so then finally then what you're going to need um, you are going to need a free Flutterflow account of course um, so you don't need to be a paid subscriber to build this application but you will need an, a, an, a free open API platform account as well and the only ask of course is that we are going to be using their API um, you may need to uh, put some money in the meter in order for you to be able to call that API but it's really really small a couple of dollars would be absolutely fine a couple of pounds um, and then you'll be able to then build this um, application and be able to get these responses back so I encourage you to do that but I'll walk you through where you need to set that up and of course we can use some Lottie files now I've got those Lottie files included in the base project of course so when we make a start on a clean canvas the application has already got loaded up some assets that you're going to need I've just done it there just really to keep it nice and simple for you guys so then it's going to be more about hooking the um, the UI elements up to those particular assets along the way so um, and finally then really the willingness is to obviously learn by doing as well so of course you should get great value out if you follow along and you then end up with the same application as I've got um, actually at the end and um, one little thing I probably ask at the bottom there is I promise from everybody who's actually watching this video to please do like it because it really does help the channel out. So then um, I think we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so um, I hope you're sitting comfortably. Um, let's get started and let's um, have a look around the base project to get you familiar with it. And then, of course, we'll then start on the actual UI construction as well. So, um, yeah, let's get going. So the first thing you're going to need to do is head over to Flutterflow.io. If you haven't created an account, please do go ahead and create one or use the link in the description. It will take you here. And of course, sign in there and create that account. And then the next thing you need to do is then actually clone the project. So there's also a link in the description. If you click on that link, it will take you to this particular page. It's a, like a vanilla project here with, with the base assets ready to go. What you need to do, though, of course, is you need to hit the clone project button. So literally clone the project give the project a name and then that will then be in your project as a starting point so if you do that then we'll be ready to go 
So then here we are then, this is the start of the project, completely empty. You should be seeing something very, very similar to this on your screen. Of course, you might be in light mode or dark mode, so of course your, your screen representation might look a little bit different. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna have a, quickly, have a quick look at the customizations that's been made to this application to get it to where it needs to. The UI does nothing, it's completely blank from that regard, but there's a few bits that's been set up. So let's have a little look. So again, nothing much to show here, we've just got one single home page there that is the screen that you're seeing on on display at the moment no components have been created let's have a little look down into the uh, theme settings so we've inside here there's a couple of little additions that we've made to the project so we've inside the topography and icons there's been a font change we've got a font up here called inter so um, of course you can choose whatever font you like but inter is a nice font uh, to be to be using with inside this particular application pretty well much everything that we've got down here is is generally the same um, so there shouldn't be any changes that's going to be required there from yourselves and then theme widgets um, we're going to be creating some theme widgets very very soon so this is the location that we're going to be I'll show you how to create those along the way and then we've um, in the color section there's been some customizations made to the uh, to the kind of the palettes here to support both light and dark mode operation as of course we walk through and we build the application then I'll be adjusting those colors along the way um, and then you'll get pretty familiar with um, the actual style of the application so the application contains no application state we're going to be setting some state variables up inside this particular section to support the functioning of the application I'll walk you through that very very shortly um, in the projects media and assets there's a couple of little bits in here there we've got some lottie animations which we're going to use with inside the application we're going to hook onto these um, very very shortly when we start constructing the UI and finally the other little bit that I just want to show you here is the custom functions so with inside here there is already some some files that's being created for you we've kind of got a couple of uh, functions up here I'm going to walk you through the behaviors of those when we get to that stage in the video series but just consider that they're, that they're there at the moment there's one thing we have to do in just a moment and just just compile those to get rid of a couple of errors and of course we've got some we've got a custom action here as well this is the piece of code that will actually call out to the open API platform it will send our request and then it will handle our responses when it comes back and of course, we'll then pass those responses into a couple of other little custom functions that will do a little bit of a manipulation for us, and then we'll store them with inside the application for safekeeping. So we'll walk through all of the code elements very, very soon. So that's the basic um, setup of the application. As you can see there, there's not a lot changed from a basic application, but there's just a few pieces on there to kick us off. Um, there's a couple of areas in the project you're gonna see up here. We're gonna need to clear those first because you've um, cloned this project that's got code in for the very, very first time we're just going to need to compile that code so typically what I do is I would just literally go up here and I would click on the custom functions option there and I would hit compile code so just leave that to do its thing you should see a tick box appear which we have done so that's indicating that things are good for us now periodically during the build of the application you might find that you need to do that again a few times but now you know how to do it just carry on doing that when you need to so here's a quick preview or then of the application that we're going to build I've just put a very very simple question in there of how many planets are there in the solar system I'm just going to hit the send button it's going to go away call the open platform uh, system and of course there you go there is the answer that we've got back and we can say which is the uh, biggest as a question oh just hit the send button there and it should come back with the answer that we're looking for. So as you can see, the application is fully functional, it's working just as we like it, and um, that is what we are gonna build together. So let's now commence creating the UI of this application, which will then set us quite nicely up to the next stage. We're gonna then start hooking that onto some of the functionality. So let's do that now. So one of the fantastic features of Flutterflow is the ability for us to create themed widgets. Now this is styling that we can apply to our widgets. So if you're not familiar with the term widgets, these are the components that you kind of see on the left hand side. We've got a number of, of these widgets that we can drag and drop into our application to give it various degree of functionality. The great thing about themed widgets is that across the board with inside Flutterflow is there are a number of base widgets that we can use. These are 
but these are really important widgets like buttons and panels, you know, containers, all that kind of thing that we can style up and we can then put a general kind of look and feel to our application. And as of course, we then make changes to our application, we can then apply those themed widgets throughout. And of course, if we then decide to then change the look and style of our application, then we can change them in these themes in one place, these themed widgets in one place, and it will then retrospectively, retrospectively apply that across the rest of our project. So for our application, we need to create a couple of themed widgets. So let's do that now. So on the left hand side, if you just move over to the theme settings option and you just go to the theme widget section, we're going to create some theme widgets in here. So the first ones we're going to focus on are containers. These containers are what they are, they're containers, they hold other widgets. So we're gonna theme some of those up. We can need some panel um, sort of widgets first. So let's hit the create widget option up here. And we're just gonna give our first one a simple title here. So um, the first one they're gonna call is, this is gonna be a container, and this is gonna be a primary container. And just select container, and we just hit create. So this will just give us up this, this preview here, and this is where we can now start making some changes. So with inside this container, we're gonna keep this one as a like, a like a blue, it's gonna be our primary kind of, our blue paneled container. So that's why it's called primary. So we're gonna give this a border of uh, 16. Okay, so just hit inside there, hit 16. You can just see that we're getting some rounded uh, columns here. And with inside the actual background, we're gonna make a little change here and we're gonna turn this to be a primary color. So you can see it's nice and blue. Um, that's all that we need to do with inside that container. So just move up to the save option there and we're just gonna duplicate this now and we're gonna call that, we're gonna click on this one here and we're just gonna change the name up here and this one's gonna be called secondary. Okay, and the secondary container is just gonna be a white container. So we're just gonna move over to the primary color here and we're just gonna choose the secondary background option just there. So just choose that. And you'll just see there that you've got a representation of it wide there. Everything else remains the same. In fact, we're, it's the border color actually we do need to change. So let's just go to border color and we're just gonna choose the, uh, the secondary option that's just there. So you can just see very, very carefully there we've kind of got like this border that just sits around our, our our container so that's pretty well much it for that particular container so just hit save up there and then let's just now duplicate the uh, the container primary there so just select that let's click on the container primary let's just move up here now this particular container is going to be a primary gradient okay so we're just going to give this a if I can spell right gradient so this is going to kind of have this like feathered kind of color from this got the the kind of the primary blue to a tertiary blue which is just a slight variation okay we're going to keep everything here the same we're just going to move down here to the uh, to the gradient option we're just going to turn that on here um, and we just want to change the secondary color actually to our tertiary color. So you can just see here that it's got a slight kind of dark color just moving down to a sort of a lighter blue. So that's simply the all, oh, all we need to do there. Um, everything else remains the same. So let's just hit the save option. So we've got our three primary containers uh, now kind of created for our application. So now we're going to create a couple of other themed widgets. Okay, so we're just going to click on the create widget option up here. And this time we are going to create a, a, a themed widget for text. Okay, so we're just going to choose here text body and um, we call it primary I think I've got here on my notes so it takes a body primary and we're just going to hit create here and um, we're just going to give this some 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 sort of a styling characteristics okay so on the right hand side here you can see that pretty well much some some details have already been filled primary text is correct we want to keep it there um, the actual font weight is going to be sort of there it's going to be 414 that's absolutely fine the line height we're just going to change this to 1.3 this will just give it a little bit more space between any characters that it wraps around so just a little bit more spaced out um, I think that's pretty well much here my notes here on the left it's looking pretty good I think that's all that I need to do in that particular one so we're just gonna hit save and then we just need to create another um, sort of uh, text uh, sort of uh, sort of style so let's just hit create widget and this one we're just gonna call this text body and we're gonna call this secondary Okay, it's going to be of text, hit create. 
And then with inside here, we're just going to change the primary text to be the secondary text. So the secondary text is just a little bit lighter gray, um, just compared to the, the other text style. So the line height again will be 1.3. And that should be all that we actually need to do there and just hit save. So next up, we're going to create an icon themed button. So just hit the create widget. We are just going to call this um, icon uh, button uh, primary and it's going to be a icon button just there hit create and then inside our icon button we are just going to change the primary text color to be the primary color there and we're just going to choose the add option here but we're going to actually change this to a send so this will just represent our send that we'll actually have with inside our ui remember this is just a base style and um, we'll likely start up something slightly different but it's good to kind of keep everything as our primary just in case we wanted to use that as our as our key color through the application so i'm just going to change the button size down here to 50 just makes it slightly smaller and i think everything that we've got there is pretty good that looks in fine so hit save there and we've pretty well much got our themed widgets that we need now of course you could create a lot more themed widgets we um, but in our application we're only going to be using a small number of them but of course if you want to carry on styling up other sort of widgets in your own application i highly encourage you to do it because it means that you can then centrally control and manage kind of the base characteristics of the look and feel of your application of course if you then decide to make any changes to it for example you might decide to change the the borders around the edges from like saying 16 to then say 10 you can just do that in one location that be reflected right right the way through your application so there we go thank you for following along in this intro into the series we've got our base project now set up ready to go we're now ready to move into the ui construction phase please do have a little bit of patience in that particular video because it will take a while to set that ui up but once we're there we'll be there ready to move on to the more interesting stuff Please do subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed and please do like this video, really do appreciate your likes. Of course, I've got some social media is there as well, so please do feel free to follow me as well. So until the next one, we'll see you soon.